During the week, our family is pretty busy. You've got two full-time working parents and two very active children running a mile a minute Monday through Friday. So on Saturday morning, I like to take our time, slow down, and spoil everybody with my homemade crepes. So years ago, when I married a Frenchman, I knew that homemade crepes were going to have to be part of my repertoire. Now, at first glance, they may seem a little bit intimidating, but they're actually easier to make than pancakes, believe it or not, if you follow my foolproof tips. So step number one, you're gonna start with about a cup of flour. To that, you're gonna add your milk. You wanna whisk that up just until the flour is completely dissolved and combined into the milk. This is really trick number one. Lumps and crepes are not a good thing, so you wanna make sure that your batter is as smooth as possible, and adding the milk to the flour right away will get you there. Then you're gonna add your sugar and your salt, give that a good whisk, and then the eggs. Now the eggs should really be nicely beaten before adding them to the batter as well. Again, just to get the smoothest batter possible. And then the final step is some melted butter. So go ahead and add the melted butter, give it a good whisk, and your crepe batter is done. So tip number two is really the pan, because a great crepe has a nice thinness as well as springiness to it. And it really has to do with how much batter hits that pan and what the circumference of the pan is. So I have found over the years that the best pan is a 12 inch non-stick skillet. So the circumference is 12 inches, but the actual bottom is nine and a half inches. The reason why that is great is because when you take a ladle of batter and pour it into a nine and a half inch pan, that is the perfect size to create the perfect thinness of a crepe. The problem with a standard crepe pan is that they're only eight and a half inches. So that extra inch between eight and a half and nine and a half makes all the difference to getting a really nice, thin, delicious crepe. Tip number three is to use some oil. Dab a little bit on a paper towel, and then just rub the whole pan throughout, going up the sides and on the bottom. I like to use grapeseed oil, but you also could use canola oil or vegetable oil. Then you're gonna ladle out your batter. Now here is tip number four. As soon as that batter hits the pan, you wanna take your pan and start moving it all around so that all that batter is well distributed along the bottom of the pan. Now my next tip, knowing how and when to flip a crepe. So I think the best time to flip your crepe is when you don't see any more wet batter on top. You'll see the crepe will start to kind of dry out and all of the edges will become golden brown. That's when you know it's time. So you're gonna go in with a long metal spatula and just kind of release the crepe all the way around the perimeter, just making sure it's nice and loose. And then when it comes to crepe flipping, I really don't go for the kind of crepe flipping theatrics where you have to flip it upside down in the air. That is not necessary. I think the best way to do it, and even though it is a little unglamorous, but it does work, is to go in with your hands, just pick up the crepe and give it a flip. It works every time and there is no crepe flipping drama involved. Then you're gonna let it cook for at least another 30 to 40 seconds on the other side, and then take your crepe and slip it out of the pan onto a cutting board. And that's it, your crepe is done. Now if you wanna make a batch of these crepes for a party or a brunch, you definitely can do that in advance. All you would do is take a large sheet of aluminum foil, on top of that you're gonna put some paper towel, and then as your crepes are done, just line them all up stacked on the paper towel, tightly wrap it with the paper towel and the foil, pop in the fridge, and then when it comes time to serve, just remove the foil, keep them in the paper towel, so it's all ready to go, how nice is that? Pop them in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute, and you're ready to go, fresh crepes. Now for the fillings of the crepes. So at our house, everybody has their own preferred fillings. So for my girls, they love raspberry jam, so I'll put about a tablespoon of raspberry jam inside the crepe, just spreading it all around the inside. Then you're gonna fold it in half, then in quarters, pop it on the plate, and dust it with a little powdered sugar. And if you ask my husband, he sort of goes back and forth between apricot jam or Nutella. So usually if it's a special occasion or a long week, he'll go for the Nutella. And for me, I really love butter, lemon juice, and powdered sugar. I know it's sort of a strange combination, but I love the flavors of those, especially in the springtime when we have lots of lemons growing on our trees. That's my go-to combo. Another great thing about this recipe is they're not just for breakfast. You could also make this for a fancy dinner party as a dessert. You could just make your crepes in advance, pop a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top, and then drizzle some homemade chocolate sauce. And that is a very impressive dessert that can all be basically made in advance. And your guests will be completely wowed when you bring that to the table. So there you have it, my go-to Saturday morning breakfast that really sets the tone for a relaxing, slow down weekend. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. I think you'll find they're easier than pancakes and a lot more fun too. 
I'll see you next time.